Okay, guys, just a uh, quick recap. Not that you need to have that, but uh, obviously it was a great win for us uh, to go on the road at homecoming, beat one of the top defensive teams in, in, in our conference, a very well-coached team. Uh, we started poorly, but, you know, uh, really when you go back, you watch the film and you look at what happened, you know, we took uh, a team that hadn't really let up very many rushing yards to anybody in the country including the top number one 15 ranked team in the country. And we were able to rush for uh, over 230 yards in that football game. We ended up with 300 and um, three, I don't know what our total offense was here, but it was, it was uh, 340 ish yards of total offense. So uh, we overcame a slow start and uh, play with great energy, play with great passion. Uh, we were able to tighten up on defense after the first quarter make the adjustments necessary. Um, obviously, uh, there's either team can say there were plays on either side that they could have made or should have made. And that's what a big time college football game is on the road. And, uh, you know, we obviously had plays that we wish we had opportunity that we could have made. Fumbled the ball right before the half, going in for a score or worst case, a field goal. So that's the way the ball bounces in games, but you got to hang in there. You got to find a way to win. And that's what we did in that game. We found a way to win. I'm proud of our team, the way they competed. Um, it's, it's just one more, one more stop along the, uh, along the maturity train. Um, and uh, I think we can, we, can, we can build off of that. We go from that game into this Rutgers game right now. Rutgers is, I guess, ranked 15th in America. They're an outstanding football team. I uh, look at them on defense. Uh, you know, they've got eight returning starters. Kasim uh, Green, Jamal Merrill, Steve uh, Boharness, and Logan Ryan. I mean, outstanding players. I, I look, they're, they look like, you know, great, great prospects, and uh, they play with a great motor. I like, their, I like the way they close to the ball. They're great. They're exceptional tacklers on offense. Uh, returning six starters, their quarterback, Gary Nova, really seems to be playing quite well. He's quite accurate. Uh, uh, Juwan Jameson is a fantastic back. Great balance, great power. They have, excuse me, a big offensive line. I like their tight end, uh, Jefferson. He's uh, a really good pass receiver, but I, I think an exceptional blocker. Their offensive line's huge. Um, and uh, Brandon Coleman, their wide receiver, number 17. He's a playmaker. He's got great size. So when I look at this team, I, I, I got to tell you, I think they're fantastic in special teams too. I know they blocked the field goal for a touchdown against Syracuse. But just as a whole, watching their special teams, I think they play fast. I think they play hard. Not all teams do that. They do. So I think they're a complete team, and, uh, and it'll be a tremendous challenge for us. Uh, and Kyle's done a great job uh, preparing that team and coaching that team. And uh, so they'll come into the link with tremendous confidence. And uh, we're going to come in there with just a great work week and a great attitude and, uh, uh, and a hard-nosed mindset. And uh, we're just going to go uh, – we're going to go – attack the team, take our shot, and uh, go play really, really hard and get this game into the fourth quarter and, uh, and do what we do. So that's kind of where we are. It's exciting. I hope that Philadelphia will come out and support this game like no other. I could see no reason why the stands wouldn't be packed. We've got a local team within a couple hour radius coming in here that's the 15th in the country. Our students, every single student on this campus should be there. Philadelphia should be there. It's in the link. It's a beautiful football college Saturday. We're, we're, we're 2-0 in the Big East, trying to be 3-0. They're undefeated in the Big East. It's a geographical rivalry game. What an atmosphere. So I hope we have just a tremendous turnout for a great day of football. Kickoffs at noon. I don't know what else you could be doing. You know what I mean? Raking leaves or something? I mean, uh, so I hope that the place is rocking and rolling. I'm sure it will be. Any questions? Did you say yesterday that you, you guys didn't have your best Tuesday of the year. How was practice? I thought we had a great practice today. You know, competed hard. You know, it's uh, uh, practice hard. I like the way we approach things here. Uh, I like our guys. I like our players. You know, they just kind of get, get to work. And, uh, you know, we were in a pretty darn physical football game last week. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are banged up right now. You know, not seriously banged up, but banged up, you know. It's, and they, had, they came out today and gave us great effort, and then we got to have another good day tomorrow. Coach, are your players using winning as a motivation to go out and continue to winning. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that, you know, you can get great positive momentum from winning, and the, and the flip is true from losing. Um, so this has been very positive for us to find a way to win over the last two weeks. It's a great learning experience. You can't, 
you know, it's hard to get that experience. It's, it's, it's a tremendous deal. Now, we're still young, we're still inconsistent, we still make too many, far too many, way too many mistakes in football games, and they're costly for us. And, um, and that's, you know, that, that's where we are right now. But the fundamental building block is built on toughness, uh, passion for the game, never allowing your will to be broke, and we're seeing great signs of that. And that's a great foundation. The other stuff is what it is. You've got to work to smooth it out and get it better, and that comes with experience. But this stuff right here, I think, is, is a foundation you can build on over a longer period of time. What about winning late, as you have done in the last two weeks? Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it, 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 sometimes, you know, with young teams or any team, it's hard to, you get down, and, you know, you need to experience the ability to come back and win it in the end. Coaches always talk about it, but it's, it's another thing when you're in it and you're up against it and you're on the road and it's not going your way and you've got to find a way to win. There's a lot to teams that learn how to find a way to win. And that's something that you hear at Temple has been important that we've had this opportunity to do that. Steve, I know you talked about finding a way to win and uh, toughness, uh, but you've been preaching that for a while. What can you really uh, attribute these two victories to? What are you guys doing differently uh, on, on film that you see? Well, I just think that I don't know that we're doing something differently. It's just that we're in the second year of our program, and I feel like the philosophy of who we want to be is continues to take hold, even with the loss of so many talented players that we had. And that's important, having that resolve. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not. Nor am I going to sit here, and you guys know it, and I know it. I mean, and say like, okay, now we're good to go. You know what I mean? We're still the same team we were. I mean, maybe a little different, but I mean, relatively speaking, that we were three years, three weeks ago, last week, two weeks ago. I mean, we're a little bit older. We're getting a little bit more experience. We're fragile. We don't have great depth. We're still, if we have a series of injuries or situations we've had to overcome already, we've lost players, and and that's and that's something that's that's going to be hard to overcome for us. So I don't. I say these things with no prediction for the future, other than the fact that. When you press play, it's obvious to see that our kids are playing very hard, and they're playing with heart and passion. So that's not you know me making it up or spinning it. That's just the way it is. And where does it go from here? I hope it continues, but I'm not naive enough to think that with the, with youth sometimes you you can bounce a little bit, you know. And that's what maturity is all about. So. Is Montel Harris coming to his own? I think he is. I think he's starting to do that. He he was better this week than he was a week ago. You know, I think he's really feeling healthier and healthier. And, uh, he, you know, he was certainly a real workhorse in that game. And in a lot of ways, not just carrying the ball. So, um, you know, that's a guy that, you know, we did obviously, you know, I don't whine about a lot of things, you know. But, I mean, we didn't have him early. I mean, that's a pretty big weapon not to be playing with. So, it's nice to have him back. Uh, and he brought that to us. And then, of course, we lost Matt, you know, on the first play again. So, you know, one of our next, you know, those are our top players. And so we were playing without Matt. But, you know, that's football, and that's the way it's going to be. You hope that, you know, you, you lose a guy, you gain a guy. You hope you don't lose, lose. Because when you don't have too much depth, you know, then all of a sudden other factors are going to come into play here. So you're talking about playing Gilmore. Um, if you decide to play Jamie, not redshirt him, I know you said Matt. We played him. Yeah. If I know you say you're not sure what's going to happen with Matt. He's working through it. But when you decide to play Jamie, is that kind of an indication you think, well, we're not sure what's going to happen with Matt. We need that depth there. If the ankle's going to be a lingering thing, that's, you kind of have to just go with it. Right it there. really just had all to do with the fact that we've got to go win a football game. We had to play him. We're playing him. And that's it. Now we're going to play him. I have to play him. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means it's five snaps, ten snaps. I can't count on that. I just... That's where it is. That's the way it is. How, how does he look for you? Because he was, he was one of the more, I guess, like, more notable recruits to come out. I think he's going to be a great football player. Not a good one, a great one. I think he's a natural. I think he, I, I, I can't, honestly, I'm looking forward to watching him play. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, the liability with young players in there, they can put the ball on the ground, which, is, which can cost you a game. But in terms of talent and ability, he's a damn good player. I'll bet. You see next guy's up more. Tyler. Other freshmen have stepped in. Yep. What, what is the, what's your philosophy on freshmen like when they come in? Do you know when they come in who's going to help me right away? Who isn't? Nope. Really don't, you know. So it's been great watching these guys emerge. But they're, you know, 
I, you know, our, our staff is working overtime right now. I can tell you, like, every day is so, is such a strain mentally and physically because you're dealing with some of these young players trying to get them ready to play and, and just a roller coaster ride you go on with them every day, you know, but it's worth it. You know, it's, uh, you're paying into this uh, annuity for the future, you know, but it's, 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 uh, it's it's a work in progress, man. Specifically with Tyler, what what does he bring to the table that's you know allowed him to step in there? He said he didn't even find out until just before the South Florida game he was going to actually really start and play. I mean, I think he brings toughness. He's a tough guy. He loves football. Uh, he's competitive. You know, I mean, that that's really what he brings. Well, he's kind of got that howdy do look to him, like, you know. <laughs> but you know, when you talk about. You know, 15 and 19 tackles, that's a pretty good start. That guy loves football, man, I'm telling you. Like, I knew that. Like, you know, we looked at him and, and uh, you know, I remember Matt Rule saying, we got to take this guy, you know. And no one was really, no one was recruiting him. Not really. No one was recruiting him. He's a, he will come out of here a bona fide Big East linebacker, you know. And this is the way it is. That's the beauty, you know. Uh, you know, you get these kids, you come to Temple, you have a chance to recruit some of these guys. It goes to show you, man, don't recruit them for the stars and, Recruit him for the toughness, for the love of the game, the passion. You know, in Milford Academy, Billy Chaplick said that the guy was a tough guy. And, you know, he's a tough guy. That's what he is. He was that way in high school. You know, in high school, he was the same guy as he is right now. You know, it's funny how that goes sometimes. You know, believe what you see. You know, believe what you see. Steve, at that one corner position, it's now a struggle a little bit. You took him out for a while and then put Abdul Smith in there. What, how are things shaping up over on that side of the field with those guys? Just creating competition, you know. If a guy's not playing well, you know, I think you owe it to the team to put the next guy in. You know, it's not always exact how you do it, but, you know, I just think that you're just trying to give guys opportunities. I mean, no one knew that Tyler Matakevich was going to do what he did really, right? Nia Adewale was playing actually quite well for us. He gets hurt, Tyler steps up, now all of a sudden here comes Tyler Matakevich. You just don't know, you know. You just don't know, and you just gotta. It's kind of like the older I get, the more I get the philosophy of, well, let's get the next guy ready to roll. Let's go. It's kind of like you know, Sean Boyle got hurt in the game. And here we're taking a freshman right guard. Now we're moving him to center to go win the game in a two-minute drill and the shotgun and everything else. I mean, it's just like, what are you gonna do? You know, next play is gonna happen. You gotta roll. That's the way it is. Sean and Anthony are probably going to be okay to play Saturday? Yeah, I would think so, absolutely. Did they practice today? Oh, they were out there today. You know, we're taking a bunch of contact, but they're out there. How about Matt? You know, Matt's a little further away. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, he's certainly further ahead this time than he was this time last week, but, you know, I don't, I don't have that answer right now. Would you, I mean, I guess if he's able to go, maybe not 100%, I mean, would you put him out there on special teams again, or would you maybe just spot him? How, how would you? It's just so hard. I hate to speculate until I really get my arms around how he's feeling, you know, because you know, then I'd just be talking to talk. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that we miss him as a competitor. I know that for sure. He's one of the better competitors in the conference. Steve, what finally shook loose for you guys in terms of your pass rush? Uh, the six sacks were more important. And they were in a more of a run set grouping, so we're playing more run, more of a run demeanor, as opposed to you know a little bit more of a get up the field demeanor, because of the grouping. Once we figured that out, kind of changed a little bit and, and, and got a little bit more of, an, of a get up the field mindset going. So I thought they, our guys did a great job of cranking it up. I mean, you know, we were slow starting on both sides, very slow. I mean, I knew on offense we would be because we were playing a formidable defense, and I knew it was going to take a while. You know, and the last thing you wanted was to be playing on the long field and getting behind. And, but I knew that that would happen. I knew it was going to take probably about as long as it took for us to kind of get the run game going on offense. I probably thought it would probably do that, to be honest with you. That didn't shock me at all. Just the fact that all of a sudden, whoa, we're, you know, we're, we're down 14, that kind of got you. But, you know, um, it was what it was. And uh, like I said, we hung in there, made a bunch of plays on both sides of the ball. Now, there was a, there was a bunch of plays in the kicking game, too, you know. So. Steve, um, Gary knows they don't really ask him to do a lot. 
but what he does, he's very effective. How do you get him out of his comfort zone? You know, I mean, you can't, you just can't let him sit back there and chuck the ball around. You know, it's like all these quarterbacks. If it's like seven on seven and there's no pass rush, you guys are going to complete a bunch of footballs to a bunch of good football players. You got to, you got to find a way to, you know, whether it's a three man, four man, five man, six man. You got to have, you got, you got to find a way to get all quarterbacks out of their comfort zones. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, and if you can't do that, you know, <laughs> chances are you're in trouble. You know. You got it's hard to cover guys down that long, especially when they're really, really talented players, you know. goals. And you said win this game, yep. get pole eligible. That's it. When you put yourself in a position now, and I know yesterday you addressed this and said they actually okay, but do you change it all? Like or is it still the same same goal? Our goal is to win the opener and our goal was to get bowl eligible and that's really where we are right now, you know? And if we can meet that goal, then we'll talk about the next goal. But right now, that's what it's all about for us, and uh, and it's going to be an absolute battle. I mean, you know, I mean, we you know, we've got three wins, and we got to get three more. So it starts this Saturday. We've got to find a way to get a win. That's that's what it is, and, and that's really how we look at it with our team, with our coaches. How do we find a way? We don't. We just need on Saturday at whatever time, 3 or 30 or whatever, we just need to have one more point than the other team. That's all. Whatever that is, however that gets done, doesn't really matter to me. Don't care how we do it. I don't care if it's 3 nothing. It doesn't make it lick a difference to me. I don't really care about all, any of that. Steve, this is Temple's first game against a nationally ranked opponent while you've been head coach. Is there a different level of excitement around here, a different level of buzz? I mean, I would think there's a different level of buzz amongst the fans. You know, and uh, for me to say that the players don't feel that, I mean, I'm sure they do. I mean, yeah. But we just got to approach, you know, in, in a coach's and a player's world, believe it or not, you get into these Tuesdays and Wednesdays, it really gets you, you know, you kind of got so much on your plate that that's really where your focus is, you know, because you're living it. But the energy and the excitement surely builds as the week continues. That's kind of cool. I mean, that's what college football is, right? It's great to, it's great to be playing a big time game that matters, right? I mean, that's terrific. You know, and that, I, I'm really, really excited for our program for that. That's that's great. You've talked about how you belong in this league, but you knew there would be challenges early because you're kind of doing this on the fly and you're so young. What do you think you've proven, and who have you proven it to by winning these first two games? I think what we've proven is is that there's a great foundation here at Temple. You know, I think. You know, you guys have witnessed the expansion of our building, the expansion of our campus, the commitment of the administration towards the university, towards athletics. I think that's been obvious. I think you've seen the building of a football program that can compete, in, you know, against other like schools. I mean, that has been happening for a couple of years. Now we have to do it on a more week-to-week -week basis. I think you're seeing the foundation of a tough, gritty football program. It doesn't mean that we've arrived, and it doesn't mean there's not going to be bitter disappointments along the way. It just, but it means what it is. I mean, that's what you see. And that you can, you know, in, instead of a few weeks ago where you were seeing some stuff like, ah, oh, it's the same old thing, and that's not been the case. Now, we haven't finished yet, but that's not, that, that part is not true, and it's not the case. Where we go from here, that remains to be seen. But... But at least I think there's enough to be seen where you know that that statement's not accurate. And where, how do we finish and all that? Well, let's let let's let that storyline be told. And uh, but but I think we all know sitting in this room that we're heading on the right path to the right place. It's just a matter of when exactly we get there. So that's I think what's been proven. How big was it for these guys mentally just to win those two games in a row? Because in the past. Temple win a big game and then it'll be a letdown the next week and, and uh, not only just to win you know, consecutive big yeah. games for the first time in history, but just to win the, those consecutive games. I mean, most importantly, I think it builds com some confidence. You came, we came off two losses, okay, and there was a you know there was some negativity out there, and we you know I we were all steady to boat, kind of said, hey, you know, you know, we were a matchup team against Maryland and they beat us. We played. Didn't play well in that game, and to their credit, they played better than we did. And but they've gone on to show that you know they're getting better too. 
we played Maryland in the ACC. Now we didn't play, you know, whatever. And then we went and played a Penn State team. And I told you that Penn State was a good football team, and it'll prove out that they are a good football team. They were supposed to be a good football team. Okay? Um, so I think it's kind of just going the way that you, you know, you'd hope that it would go. We're kind of, you know, you always wish you had another win or so in there, but, you know, it's where you are, you know. And, uh, but the two wins give you back that confidence that kind of got stolen from you a little bit, right? I mean, come off two losses and it's hard. But our, the good news is our kids never, you know, I don't know what would happen on, if we had gone to three in a row. I don't know that. But, but at two in a row, you didn't feel it. You didn't feel, you just felt like, can't wait to get back to practice and get better. That's a really good thing. You know what that means? They're buying what you're selling. You know what I mean? That's what it means. There's confidence that you got, you know, your, your team's locked in. But we still got a lot of ball left to play. And every game we're going into, it's not like, you know, we're a front runner here. I mean, you know, we're playing the 15th ranked team in the country. You know, it's great. I mean, we're all excited about it. But they are the 15th ranked team in the country. I mean, and they're pretty damn good. Steve, um do you guys feel like you're playing for something? I mean, playing for the city. And what I mean by that is, like, I live in Jersey, and soon when I come over the bridge, I drive up 95, and I see a Rutgers football billboard. You know, and, and then if I turn on WIP, I'll hear, you know, Flood talking to the uh, Philadelphia media. I mean, um, first of all, how does that make you feel, and do you feel like you guys are playing for respecting your own city? Well... We feel like it's our responsibility to keep building our program and, 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 and gaining respect. And those things are a byproduct of we have to keep building and gaining more respect. And you do that through your play on the field and wins. And uh, Rutgers credit, they've built that program. And, uh, and, they're, and they're winning and they deserve respect. And we're building ours and we're not quite to that extent yet. but. It's our job to get it there. Does that mean that there's not a tremendous burn inside and a fuel and a, yeah, you're competitive and does it sometimes hurt you? Yep. But it's a mo it's a tremendous motivating force. But it's our job to to build it and you don't build it in a year or two or three. You got to build it over time, and that's what we're in the process of doing. And you just hope that people respect that you're on the right path and you're doing it. But we haven't arrived, and so we haven't gotten that, that respect yet, and that's okay. I mean, our fans, I think, see that, and I think there's a lot of other people and coaches see it, but we've got to evaluate that over the course of time as we're building right now. You know? So that'll happen. That'll happen. Mm -hmm. There'll be more temple billboards, you know? and, our, and, our, and our attendance will continue to grow, and our university will continue to grow, and our football program will continue to grow. And where we stand today is far different than where we stood five, six years ago. And where we stand five years from today will be far different than where we are right now. And that's just the way it's going to be. And it's going to happen. That's how it's going to go. And it takes time. Anything else, guys? Appreciate it.